Welcome to another Code Swag video. In this video, I'm thrilled to announce the release of Ionic View, a native view version of the Ionic framework that makes it easy to build apps for iOS, Android, and the web using the amazing Vue.js framework. Ionic View allows you to make use of all the great new features that have recently shipped in Vue 3. In this video, we're going to look at the new production release of Ionic View and how it fits into the Ionic ecosystem. We'll also look at the basics of getting started with Ionic View. You can jump straight to the part that you're interested in by clicking the timestamp in the links in the description below. If you want to know how to create your first full mobile application using Ionic View, then make sure you hit that red subscribe button so you can catch that video when it's out. Without further ado, let's hit the intro. Okay, so if you're new to the whole Ionic ecosystem, Ionic View is the latest milestone by the Ionic team to make Ionic the go-to framework for web developers who want to create native mobile apps and PWAs using a single code base. Ionic Framework is an open source UI toolkit focused on building high quality mobile apps for native iOS, native Android, and the web. Ionic components, therefore, are web components built with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, allowing web developers to build native experiences using familiar technologies. As of 2020, more than 15% of apps today are built using the Ionic framework. So a little bit of history about Ionic View. It was first released in early 2019, but it was meant for Vue 2 and lacked support for important features such as the V model. Meanwhile, around the same time, the Vue team was forging ahead with development of Vue 3. So the Ionic team thought it was prudent to suspend Ionic Vue for a while in favor of waiting for Vue 3 to mature so that it can be supported instead. Since the release of Ionic 4, dubbed Ionic for Everyone, the framework was rewritten from the ground up to use web components, and this makes it possible for Ionic to support not just Angular, which was its original framework of choice, but other JavaScript frameworks like React and Vue. The release of Ionic Vue is a major milestone in achieving that vision of Ionic for everyone. So I'd like to officially welcome the Vue community into the Ionic ecosystem. The release of Ionic Vue demonstrates that any web developer can build performant cross-platform applications with Ionic Framework using the framework of their choice. Okay, so to get up and running with Ionic Vue, it's very easy as writing a Hello World program. So first, you have to ensure that you have the most up-to-date version of the Ionic CLI installed. So for that, let's head over to the terminal. Okay, so I have my terminal opened here and I'm going to navigate into my projects directory. Okay, I'm in my projects directory. I'm just gonna clear the screen. You can use any directory you want. You don't have to copy my specific directory. So, okay, the first thing is you have to make sure that you have the up-to-date version of the Ionic CLI. And this is especially the case if you have used Ionic View Beta. So to do that, we run the command npm install-g at Ionic CLI at latest. So 
So that's going to activate the node package manager and it's going to install the latest version of the Ionic CLI. If you want a more comprehensive guide on setting up your Ionic development environment, including integrating with Android Studio and device emulators and Xcode and the like, then you should watch the video showing in the link in the top right corner of your screen. Okay, so we have our Ionic CLI updated to the latest version at the time of filming. That's version 6.12.0 and we can check that by typing in ionic dash v okay great so we have the latest version of ionic installed the next step is we want to create a new ionic project and to specify that we want to use the view framework so we do that using the ionic start command and we need to type in a name for our application. So I'm going to call it first view. And we need to specify the type. And we do that with a double hyphen followed by the word type and then view. So if we press enter, that's going to start to create the application and we are going to be prompted for a starter template. I'm going to pick the blank template. Okay, so then that's going to start downloading the template and installing it. We are going to say no to creating an Ionic account. It's not necessary. And there we go, our application is ready. So we have to navigate into our application directory. We'll do that by tapping in CD and then first view. Okay, now we are in our application directory. Let me clear the screen. So our application is ready to go. So we want to type in Ionic serve from inside our project folder so that we can launch the application in our browser. Okay, so there's our, our Ionic application running. I'm going to press Control Shift and I or Command Shift and I on a Mac and that's going to open up this mobile device view and we can see our application is ready. So under the hood, the Ionic serve command uses the view CLI to compile your application, start a development server, and then open up your app in a new browser window. After launching your Ionic view app in the browser, let's open the project in our code editor. So in our code editor, in the project folder, we want to type in the command code followed by, sorry, that's code followed by a space and a dot. And that's going to open our project in Visual Studio Code, which is my code editor of choice. But of course you can open it in any code editor that you'd like. Right, so here is our project open in Visual Studio Code. And you can see that we have a typical view project. If we open up source, you can see we have our app.view file, which is what we expect from a view project. Now, if you're using code, it, now if you're using Visual Studio Code, when you open the app.view file or any file with a .view extension, you may be prompted to install this virtual extension, which is recommended for this file type. It'll give us some syntax highlighting, which is good. So I'm going to install this. So it has syntax highlighting and other tooling 
for view uh, when using it with Visual Studio Code. Okay, there we go. And you can see that we have successfully installed Virtual because we now have syntax highlighting in our app.view file. Okay, so we want to head back to the file explorer by clicking up here. And under the views directory, if we click here, we will find the home.view file. So I'm going to open this and we have the file that is responsible for the page that shows in our browser after running on serve. So let's take one more look at that. So here we can see that this page that we're seeing right here is what is being generated by this home.view file. So let me close the file explorer so that we have more space for our code. Let me zoom in so that it's a lot easier to see. Right, and we can see that it's all pretty simple. We have the template tags characteristic of view. So here is our template from line one to line 22. That's the template portion of our file. And from line 24 down to line 38, we have our script. So this portion right here, and then we have our styles. So I'm sure if you're very familiar with the view, you will be quite familiar with what's going on. So in order to access all the Ionic Framework components from within view, we need to import them from Ionic view, the Ionic view package and provide them to our view component. So if we scroll down to the script portion of this file, you can see that we are importing Ion content, Ion header, Ion page, blah, blah, blah. All these different Ionic components are being imported from this Ionic view package. And then we need to supply these to the view component. So here from view, we are importing uh, define component and then we'll use define component to um, add to our homepage component. And then we're going to add in the particular Ionic components. So that's how we import all of the different cool stuff that we get from Ionic. That's how we pass it into Vue. And then that's how Vue recognizes all the Ionic components. So when we scroll up here into our template, we then make use of Ion page, Ion header, Ion toolbar, etc., 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 because now Vue recognizes them. Also, it's important to take note that for transitions and animations and lifecycle events, in order for those to work properly, each page must be wrapped within this Ionic page component. So, in all your view, um, uh, in all your view pages, you're going to have the opening template tag, and then you must make sure that everything else is wrapped within this ion page component so that we make sure that the transitions, lifecycle events, etc., etc., all those things that um, Ionic expects will work properly. All right, that's great. Next, let's look at the routing mechanism that is used by ionic view so let's head back to our explorer and we're gonna go under router and let's open index.ts so a few words before we dive into this file so similar to ionic angular and ionic react the ionic team uses the philosophy of using all the as much as possible all the native tooling provided by the particular framework so in this same vein, Ionic View uses the official router provided by the View framework. However, there are some slight modifications that have been made to let Ionic framework work well within the View environment. 
So you'll find that in place of the typical router view component, and I think actually in order to see this, we have to go back to home.view. So let's, uh, sorry, not home.view, but app.view. And then I'll close that. So instead of the typical router view component that is used in view applications, Ionic View uses this Ion Router Outlet. So this component is what extends the router API from view and allows it to handle Ionic Framework's animations and other stuff that's particular to Ionic Framework. So remember this in all your Ionic View apps that instead of using router view, right here, you're going to be using the Ion Router Outlet. So using this modified router is mostly the same as the regular view router, except with a few different imports. And of course, lazy loading is supplied out of the box. So when we go to, this is index.ts and let me close this. So this is index.ts, which is under our router. So here are the different um, imports. So rather than importing uh, create router and create web history from the view router, we'll instead be importing those from the Ionic view router. So you need to import them from at Ionic slash view router. And these imports wrap the view router functions of the same name and provide a few additional details that let Ionic Framework work well within the view environment. Right, so that's the difference when you are working with um, routing in Ionic, in Ionic View rather than in regular uh, Vue.js. So otherwise it's the same in terms of um, our routes so we'll create our routes in this right in this route array and then in our router we create the router and then we pass in the routes okay so that's it that's how you can get started with um, ionic view if you'd like to see further tutorials on creating ionic view applications especially native apps for the mobile platforms, then make sure that you hit the red subscribe button, click the bell icon so that you can be notified when I upload new tutorials. Also make sure to click the links showing up in the corner of your screen. Um, I'm going to be linking to uh, various videos that are view related. So if you aren't seeing any links showing up, then that means I'm yet to publish them but make sure that you're subscribed so that you can get notifications when those tutorials are published. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.